Hi, I'm Allie, and I'm a horse enthusiast. I love to learn about them, care for them, but most of all, ride them. My name is Gary, and I love to teach youth about their horses. But when kids and horses come together, safety becomes our major priority. The 4-H program has historically been an advocate for bringing youth and horses together in positive ways, like learning programs, camps, clinics, and competitions like the county fair. But 4-H continues to focus on the safety of our members and their horses. And to that end, we'd like to bring you our new safety certification program. Would you tell them about that, Allie? The intent of this safety certification is to ensure the safety of our youth in the Wyoming 4-H Horse Project. Volunteer leaders should feel free to work with youth to prepare for this certification process. Each horse a youth plans to participate with should be certified prior to entering a 4-H-sponsored competitive event. No part of this certification is intended to be a written test, but rather a hands-on learning experience in which the youth can monitor their progress in becoming a safe horseman. Certification should be done by a trained key leader who is not a parent of the child. The process is progressive, meaning a youth should complete Section 1, then 2A, then 2B, then any individual endorsements. Section 1 evaluates the safety of the youth around the horse. Section 2 evaluates how safe the horse is around the youth while also testing the knowledge and skill of the youth. Section 2A is the groundwork for showmanship and halter, while 2B needs to be completed while mounted. Section 3 tests the advanced endorsements of the horse and rider in such events as roping, trail, speed or cattle events, and jumping. The first part of the certification form identifies the horse to be evaluated. You will need to include the name and or ID number of the horse, as well as breed and description. In addition, a photo of the horse being certified will need to be attached. Be sure to include the name of the youth which is certifying the horse. Once this is done for a specific horse, it will not need to be completed again. In Section 1, we are evaluating the youth's knowledge related to horse safety. The main goal of this portion of the certification is to create a common vocabulary in order to facilitate a safe environment. For instance, in order for an instructor to efficiently ask a youth to check a cinch, the youth must first know what the cinch is and where to find it. To complete this section, a variety of techniques may be used. Most importantly, each youth should do individual work, ensuring that all individuals are aware of these safety factors. Here are some things that can be discussed with youth related to safety in Section 1. Safety zones and safely moving around the horse. In order to work safely around the horse, youth need to understand the safety zones. Help youth understand they need to avoid these areas in order to work safely around the horse. Remember, the only time it is permissible to walk in front of the horse rather than behind it is when the horse is cross-tied. In order to safely tie a horse, the youth should explain that they should tie to a secure object. To work safely around horses, a youth must have closed toe boots with a heel and smooth hard soles. Other items that may be recommended but are not necessary would be long pants, long sleeve shirt, or hat helmet. Once the youth has completed section one, they will not have to do it again even if they are using a different horse. In section two, there are two tasks to complete. First, to see if the youth can safely handle the horse and if the youth can complete each task safely. This is split up into two different groups. A, how the youth, how the youth handles the horse while on the ground and B, while mounted. Youth need to calmly catch and halter the horse. To safely do this, they should be approaching the horse from the left front of the horse and talk to it as they approach. Proper application and adjustment of the halter should be noted and explained by a youth. Tying must be done twice in order to pass off the requirement. They should tie to something that is close to the shoulder height of the horse. A proper quick release or manger knot must be used. These knots can be found in the Wyoming 4-H Horse Manual. All members, regardless of age or size, must demonstrate safely picking up a front foot. Youth will also either demonstrate or explain how to safely pick up a rear foot. 
Youth will also be asked to clean a front hoof safely. Be sure they pick away from their body. Next, we are looking for the ability of a youth to control the horse from the ground. This should look a lot like the quarter system used when showing a horse. You should understand that this is related to safety and that as a veterinarian, farrier, or judge moves around the horse, they should be moving to the optimum location just as in the quarter system used in halter and showmanship classes. Have them trot the horse at least in arena length. Next, have the youth face another direction. Next, in controlling the horse's backing, the handler should stay at the side in the safe zone. Ask the youth to back up at least a horse length in order to know they can complete this task safely. Finally, with controlling the horse from the ground, we are going to ask that the youth go through a latched gate by opening and closing it. Section 2A must be completed for every horse the youth plans to participate with in groundwork classes. This section must be completed before moving on. 2B tests the knowledge, skill, and safety of the youth while mounted on the horse. In this section, we are first going to talk about saddling and bridling. The youth should demonstrate or explain how to correctly change from a halter to a bridle. The horse should not be tied during this process. The head stall should be adjusted correctly. Ask the youth to clean the back and girth for safe saddling as those are the areas related to safety when saddling that the youth should pay particular attention to. However, this is an excellent opportunity to discuss the reasons for grooming the entire horse. Now we go on to saddling. Though some youth will be too small to actually demonstrate safely saddling the horse, they should be able to understand the concept. When saddling, the youth should show or explain that the saddle is gently placed on the withers of the horse. It should not be dropped or thrown to avoid spooking the animal. Next, they will need to secure and adjust the cinches and breast collar. An additional note at this point may be made that to unsaddle the horse, the reverse is true. The youth should explain how the equipment should be adjusted for the horse as well as themselves, including stirrup length, saddle seat size, and rein length. You should ask the youth to explain and or demonstrate proper mounting and dismounting of the horse. Smaller youth may not be able to do this properly, but they should understand the concept and be able to explain how it should look. The Wyoming 4-H Horse Manual has a detailed explanations of proper mounting and dismounting techniques. We will now ask the youth to show us how they control the horse.
it is suggested they back up for at least a horse length. Finally, ask the youth to demonstrate both direct or plow reining and indirect or neck reining to turn the horse both to the left and to the right. Through this process, we are looking for the ability of the youth to control the horse as well as the horse's willingness to respond to the youth. Remember, we are looking at this from a safety standpoint. It is okay if these tasks are not polished as you would see in a show ring. Rather, we want to see the horse and youth can safely interact. Once a horse has been certified through Section 2B, it may enter all the general riding classes. Section 3 are all the additional endorsements which can be taken at any time. Each horse does not have to be endorsed in every area. It is important for the rider to know which classes he can be entered in with which endorsements. Trail. This endorsement requires the completion of four tasks. Leaders will need a gate, bridge, and poles to complete this endorsement. We are looking for safe interactions between the horse and rider as well as the obstacles. This does not need to be a polished performance as you would see in a trail class. Speed. This endorsement requires the completion of three tasks. These could be passed off with or without the use of barrels, poles, or goats. Leaders could simply have the youth and horse gallop to the end of the arena, turn, gallop back, and stop numerous times. Evaluate youth on the control, stopping ability, and body position when completing these tasks at high speed. Upon completion, of the speed endorsement, youth may participate in classes such as barrels, poles, etc. Roping. This endorsement requires the completion of three tasks. It could be administered with or without the use of cattle. Specific skills to look for through this process are the ability of the youth to hold onto the reins and control the horse while swinging and throwing a rope. You should be able to coil the rope while holding the reins and controlling the horse. While dallying, they should keep their thumb up and all fingers out of the coils and dallies. After completing the roping endorsement, youth can participate in classes such as team roping, breakaway roping, and dummy roping from horseback. Jumping. This endorsement requires the completion of two tasks. Leaders should not evaluate how well the horse jumps, just that it does it in a safe manner does not refuse jumping, and the youth is able to hold a safe body position while completing the jump. Our young people are much too important to be put in an unsafe safe situation. We hope that you can use this information to create a safe learning environment. What we really hope for is for our youth to be more comfortable around horses and riding them in a safe environment in the 4-H program. With your help, we can ensure the future of our 4-H project is enjoyable, and safe. Thanks for coming and if you have any questions contact your local 4-H educator or go online to wyoming4h.org.